Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I, my name is Alexander uh, Zaitsev from Altinity, and uh, uh, I will tell you a little bit about ClickHouse, just uh, like like an intro. So, how many of you uh, know have heard about ClickHouse? Raise your hands. Oh, that's impressive. And how many of you are using ClickHouse already? Okay. And how many of you are going to use ClickHouse Tom tomorrow or next month? Right? Okay, good. Um, so what is ClickHouse? Um, this is one of many maps or moonscapes uh, that some people try to uh, plot in order to uh, push, in order to put different technologies into some uh, some spaces and compare to each other. So ClickHouse here stands uh, in, uh, in in the box together with uh, databases like Vertica, Teradata, uh, and, uh, and and stuff. So it's uh, it's massive parallel processing database. It's MPP database. It's real database. It's not like NoSQL, not like Hadoop. Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, it's <laughs> okay, and it's column store. Probably this is the most important about uh, ClickHouse that is column store. Uh, how many of you are know know what is the difference between column store and row store? Okay, very good. And uh, could you name some column store databases? MariaDB, column store. Uh, what else? Say it again. BigQuery. Kind of, yeah. Exosol, right? Which one? Vertica, right? Actually, not so many. So uh, there are dozens or hundreds of database management systems, but not so many column store stores. And there's a reason for that. Uh, because the first reason is that column store technology is kind of new. Uh, it has been emerged in the 90s, and uh, Sybase was the first company who uh, built a proprietary database using Column Store. That was called uh, Sybase IQ. Currently, it's SAP IQ after SAP acquired Sybase. And Vertical was uh, the first commercially successful um, Column Store database. And after that, there are a couple of not, not too many, but a handful of companies who tried to do column stores. Uh, some of them were successful, some of them were not. Uh, in addition to Vertica, uh, you can name Redshift, which is a column database. Uh, that was a separate company first, and it, was, it has been acquired by Amazon. Uh, there is Greenplum, which is built on top of Postgres. So it tries to emulate column store uh, on top of Postgres. And few others, not too many because it's pretty hard to build, right? And ClickHouse is column store. Uh, ClickHouse developers solved this uh, n not that easy problem of building column store databases. And column store databases, they are, they are, they are built uh, precisely for analytics, because in analytics, you typically have a lot of columns, like hundreds of columns, uh, but you query only a handful, not too many, five, 10 columns or something like that. And it's much more efficient to query less data. And it's also much more efficient to encode and comp compress data when it's stored uh, as columns. ClickHouse has MPP, which is called Massive Parallel Processing. So it tries to utilize every, every computer resources and every cluster resource of it if you go to cluster. It's real time, real time, both in terms of ingestion. It's not like Hadoop where when you load data in batches. You don't need to load data into, into ClickHouse every week or every day. You can load almost instantly uh, with uh, reasonably selected batches, like one, once a second or every 10 seconds, something like that. And uh, it, it, it will be immediately available for query. You don't need to wait for something. You just load the data and you query it. And when you query, it's very fast. Uh, so typically, you can see a sub-second or second response time from most of ClickHouse queries. If query takes more time, it usually means that your system is not optimized. Uh, and it's SQL database, so it talks with, uh, it understands SQL. Um, 
it has a little bit different dialect from standard, but it's getting close to standard uh, every month. Glikaus team is working very uh, hard on making it uh, SQL 92 compliant and probably 2003 compliant at some point. And most important, it's open source. It's open source under Apache 2.0 license, so you don't need to pay anything uh, for the licenses. It's not like Vertica. Uh, you just install it and start using it. Uh, originally, it has been developed in Yandex. This is a Russian company. It's like a Russian Google, uh, which uh, have 50% market share in Russia and in some other countries like Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Turkey. Um, and uh, in, inside Yandex, we have uh, Yandex Metrica, which is similar to Google Analytics, uh, but serves for, uh, for, for Yandex network of uh, advertisers, websites, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, and this is um, probably the second largest analytical platform in the world after the Google. Uh, and for that uh, analytical platform, they developed uh, ClickHouse. Somewhat kind of Google developed Google BigQuery for Google Analytics. Uh, Yandex developed ClickHouse for Yandex Metrica. And once they developed, they decided that this is so cool technology that it would be very uh, unfair to the world to keep it uh, in private and uh, put it in outsource. So, you, so we now can use it and, uh, and have fun. So today, um, I, this is actually quite a conservative number that 20, 200 companies are using in production. I think this is much more. We just don't know about all the companies who are using ClickHouse. For instance, we know very little about, about China, which is huge. And, uh, uh, and uh, much more companies uh, are experimenting. So uh, I, don't, I think many of you are, uh, are doing some experiments with ClickHouse. And uh, my, many, many companies and many uh, individuals are contributing to the code because it's open source. You're welcome to make changes. Uh, you're welcome to submit PRs and it's being reviewed and accepted. So many of the new features that are coming into ClickHouse in recent months, they're coming from the community, not from the Yandex who, who are still the core committers. So what, why, would we do in, why do we need yet another database management system? Because there are so many of them. And this is because uh, ClickHouse kind of combines the best breed of properties that you can think of. It's fast, it's scalable, it's SQL, so you don't uh, need anything. It's, because of SQL, it integrates very well with existing uh, tools. It's free, it's flexible, and it's pretty much mature for open source. Many open source technologies, when they just started to be used, they are kind of non-mature. ClickHouse is mature in terms of functionality, in terms of support, in terms of uh, community and ecosystem, which is uh, getting built around. Uh, I like uh, to characterize ClickHouse by four Fs. It's fast, flexible, free, and fun. And uh, I will try to convince you that this is all true. Uh, how fast is ClickHouse? Uh, there are several examples. Actually, there are stickers here. So you can, you can uh, have a sticker at your laptop, and it shows different numbers uh, uh, better than, better than uh, at this slide, because uh, these numbers are taken from the small system. Uh, Yandex has a much bigger system and a uh, much faster system, but still for the trillion rows table, you can uh, do queries and they're fast. Uh, this is 3.5 seconds, but you can, uh, th this is all trillion rows query. If you start to do some filtering and uh, some uh, aggregation with, with the data from this table, it's even faster uh, once you start to utilize the filter and uh, the functionality of ClickHouse. So here we added uh, a couple of filter conditions. Uh, these uh, happen to be uh, key, key columns, and ClickHouse could uh, very efficiently fil filter the data and return result in uh, a fraction of a second. Uh, so 
uh, when we start to talk about ClickHouse uh, with different companies, uh, sometimes we don't need to prove anything. We just uh, tell people, try it. And once people try it and see how it's fast, they almost have no questions uh, if they need to use it or not, because it's, it's very fast. Uh, certainly, there are a lot of benchmarks that, that you can find. This is benchmark against MariaDB column store in Spark. Uh, ClickHouse here, uh, it's uh, several times faster, as, as, as you can see. Uh, another, oh, sorry, another benchmark uh, is a very popular benchmark from Mark Litvinchik, who is an independent database consultant. And from time to time, he is given different systems, both hardware and software, and uh, he's trying uh, the system on the same data set which is uh, billion uh, taxi rides from uh, New York area. And ClickHouse is the best database he tried here uh, from uh, uh, disk-based databases. And actually, it's the only free database, um, as you can see at the bottom of the slide, that managed to, to outperform GPU-based systems. So everything that is faster than ClickHouse is GPU-based, at least uh, if you um, if you believe uh, this guy, he and 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 as you can see, as you can see, he tried pretty advanced setup like KDB Plus, MapD, Britly DB. Uh, have you ever heard about that? These are all GPU systems, very fast, very expensive, very proprietary. Zero, uh, yes, Zero, Zero 1Fi is so processor, but uh, okay, KDB Plus is very specialized in memory system written uh, at K language, if you know about that, uh, and used in uh, many financial, in some financial institutions. Okay, um, t Click, ClickHouse is general purpose database, so it's originally uh, has been used uh, as a backend uh, for dashboards and ad hoc queries. Uh, but recently, uh, we started to realize that it's very good for time series data. And uh, we at Altinity run a benchmark, or actually a series of benchmarks, using TSDB test used, which has been originally developed by Influx DB guys, uh, then um, reworked by Timescale DB guys, and we used the same uh, framework in order to run benchmark. InfluxDB and TimescaleDB uh, uh, time are all um, time series databases. Uh, so we try to play at, at, their, at their field. Uh, the benchmark consists of, um, it, it generates data, 100 million rows, and every row has 10 metrics. And it runs 15 queries uh, many repetitions of which query in several parallel threads, and then compares compares results. So it's pretty scientific and reproducible case, a reproducible benchmark that everybody can try. So, and uh, ClickHouse uh, was in most, uh, in most uh, uh, tests that uh, this benchmark consists of, ClickHouse was faster than proven time series databases like Timescale and Influx. For instance, uh, ClickHouse could load data much faster. Uh, it also consumed uh, less disk space than timescale DB in an order of mag magnitude less, a little bit more than influx DB. But I think if we would if we would rerun this benchmark today, we could uh, store ClickHouse more efficiently. And Alexey will tell you why um, in his uh, in his talk. And it has been faster or on par with these databases on most of queries. Sometimes it was a little bit slower, but it was slower on queries that are sub 10 milliseconds, as you can see, or 20 milliseconds. Uh, once a query goes a little bit more heavy, um, and this is time in seconds, these are heavy queries that are doing pretty complex calculations, ClickHouse was already far ahead of Influx uh, and Timescale DB. I don't want to uh, put a lot of detail and uh, stay long uh, discussing these benchmarks. Marks. You can find them um, at Altinity website, or you can try to repeat themselves. And ClickHouse is um, 
Second F, it's very, it's flexible. Um, this is kind of um, a tricky picture because you can think that ClickHouse is, you need to be so flexible in order to use ClickHouse, like this pencil, or ClickHouse is so flexible that um, you can do knots, right? Uh, and flexibility comes from different places. First, Click ClickHouse can run everywhere. Uh, it's Linux, uh, and it can it can run on bare metal. It can run in public clouds like Amazon, Azure, Google, Alibaba Cloud. It can run in private cloud like VMware Cloud, for instance. And it runs at, do at Docker. There is a Docker image, and since there is a Docker image, you can run ClickHouse inside Kubernetes, if you if you're brave enough, right? But <laughs> uh, Kubernetes story is, uh, um, is very in interesting, and I will tell a little bit more words about that later. Uh, once you run ClickHouse, it starts to solve problems. And from what we see uh, now uh, in different uh, businesses and different companies, ClickHouse is used for a variety of use cases across industries. Uh, the primary use case is mobile app uh, and web analytics, and this is what Yandex started with. At tech companies, so different digital advertising, RTB uh, and stuff, ClickHouse is very good in that. Uh, retail and e-commerce, uh, they use ClickHouse uh, as well. Um, in Russia, in Europe, uh, we know some companies. Operational logs analytics, this is a huge domain and increasingly it's increasingly popular. Uh, recently, so different companies that start to uh, to store logs in ClickHouse instead of storing logs in Elasticsearch, for instance. And the reason is that uh, you need uh, much less hardware, probably uh, one-tenth of hardware you use for Elastic. You can uh, store the same data in ClickHouse, um, and it's queryable. So you can query data, and um, it's not just about storage. Uh, telecom companies and monitoring companies they start to use ClickHouse in order to store different monitoring metrics. Um, and um, this is, again, the growing segment for ClickHouse usage, as we see. Financial markets, uh, it's kind of hard adoption because of regulations in financial market, but some companies who recognize ClickHouse potentials, they are already winning uh, the competition um, using uh, ClickHouse. Security audit, blockchain transaction anal analysis, these are uh, other examples of ClickHouse flexibility and applicability. A and quite often ClickHouse uh, is used in order to migrate uh, from a different system. And uh, the reason of migration is because ClickHouse is faster or easier to use uh, or just more fun to use. And actually, size does, doesn't matter. So there are companies who use ClickHouse on a single server. I can install ClickHouse on my laptop, or I even can run ClickHouse inside Minikube in my laptop if, you, if I want to. Uh, and the other there are companies who are running huge ClickHouse farms. So some numbers uh, that we know. Yandex is probably a conservative number. Uh, they have several hundreds of servers, and they uh, load about 25 billion records per day. Uh, Live Street, one of early ClickHouse adapters, 60 servers and 100 billion records per day uh, today. Um, Cloudflare, uh, also one of early ClickHouse adopters and active committers, they have 76 servers now, uh, and they load, um, or s uh, probably 78, and they load 200 billion records per day. These are mostly HTTP uh, requests and DNS requests. Uh, Bloomberg, uh, if you heard about this company, they have 100 servers and, re and uh, record enormous amount of data, 1,000 billion records per day. Um, and there is a Chinese company, Tao Tao. They have 1,000 servers. I don't know if they can disclose exact number, probably not. Um, this is company, um, China is kind of special, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's very big, uh, so typic typical internet company is usually 10, 10 times bigger than typical internet company in Europe or in the United States. 
So this Tao Tiao application, they have 300 million unique visitors per day. Um, and th those visitors are spending, uh, I, I don't remember that number, but they spend an, an average uh, probably 40 or 50 minutes in this application. T uh, Tao Tiao is a mobile application for uh, video news um, with some recommendation system and so on and so on. So enormous amount of data, enormous amount of traffic, and they need enormous amount of hardware. Uh, they had something like 20k, uh, uh, 20,000 uh, servers in Spark uh, to process the data and to provide recommendations to their uh, targeting system, and now they have uh, 20 times more, uh, 20 times, times less. And Hill House has a lot of fun. Um, now uh, I'm going to try a simple test on you. I tried it on different audiences and uh, only once, and actually it happened uh, yesterday at uh, Roy Juan Carlos University. Uh, I've got the uh, correct answer. Uh, do you know what it is? What it is? Correct. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> okay. So, um, congratulations, Spain, congratulations, Madrid, because there's at least <laughs> two people in Madrid who know answer to this question. So, yes, uh, this is APL, and this is ClickHouse. So, in ClickHouse, you can write uh, also very uh, complex programs. And this is, by the way, this is SQL, but this is a very special SQL. And the speciality comes from arrays. ClickHouse has very, very advanced arrays functionality. Uh, and this advanced array functionality allows you to do functional programming inside a database. Uh, so you just convert your data to array, and it can be done with group array uh, function. And once you have array, it's like a list. So you can use all functional programming. And ClickHouse uh, provides functions and tools uh, to work with arrays in a functional style. You can see that there is a map function, there is, uh, and it works with uh, single values or tuples. There are certainly uh, functions like filter and so on and so on. And with arrays, you can do wonders. Um, I don't want to ask what this kind of program do does. I think this is impossible to guess. Actually, it does uh, linear, linear approximation of the data to the predefined net. So if, if you have some uh, time points, uh, arbitrary time points with some data, but you want uh, to uh, approximate it to the fixed net, for instance, uh, uh, net with some fixed uh, time amount for uh, some kind of analysis, this is a program that does the job. Uh, what's new in, ah, this is not mine. Alexey will tell you what's new in this year and what we're going to expect. Um, ClickHouse um, is very is more user friendly than ever. Actually, it's it's uh, when it w was uh, issued in open source, it was kind of hard to use. There were a lot of limitations, uh, not a lot of, but quite quite a lot of limitations, some weirdness, and so on and so on. For instance, ClickHouse uh, couldn't uh, accept. Uh, negative primary keys for some for some reason initially, right? And there was some weirdness uh, around that. ClickHouse couldn't support nulls; it can support null, and so on and so on. So uh, in recent months, ClickHouse started to be GDPR compliance. I know this is very important for Europe. Uh, you can delete data, you can update update data if if needed. ClickHouse is much easier to integrate with BI tools, and thanks to SQL compatibility changes that has been done by ClickHouse team, and uh, these changes are not yet completed, so something uh, is still uh, has to be done. Uh, ClickHouse is much easier to operate in cluster. It's still not very, not very easy, but much easier, uh, thanks to tools like ClickHouse Car Copier that allows you to move clusters from place to place, thanks to distributed D D DDL, and thanks to Alternative ClickHouse Operator for Kubernetes, which is not yet released, but will be soon. Uh, and it's very easy to integrate with uh, other systems, and actually quite a lot of work is, is going in, in this direction. Uh, first of all, 
as you may already know, there are two protocols, HTTP and TCP, and uh, they are very flexible. There are many drivers and tools that support both. HTTP is certainly much more popular, but uh, for TCP there are at least Go driver, Python driver, and some others, and they're very high performant. Uh, second, table functions. This is unique ClickHouse feature that allows you to access external systems. And ClickHouse has table functions for uh, for many external sources, start, starting from files, uh, HTTP services, HDFS, uh, different databases, and so on. Kafka storage engine helps to integrate with Kafka, if you use Kafka. There are different tools for integrating logs, log ingestion to ClickHouse. Uh, you can put plugin for Logstash, you can use Clicktail, which is a separate product. There are other tools, so if you need to integrate logs, it's very, it's very easy. And there is very good integration with MySQL, and I will show you a couple of examples. And there is a growing integration with PostgreSQL, and we'll have a talk today uh, that will uh, show something completely new, uh, first ever at this meetup. Uh, this is an example of integration with MySQL that shows main ClickHouse uh, techniques. Uh, first is MySQL uh, table function, second is MySQL table engine, MySQL external dictionaries, uh, binary log replication, proxy SQL. For example, MySQL uh, table function allows you to query data from external MySQL server. Uh, you can query data, uh, and even if data is resided in MySQL, when you run queries from ClickHouse, it may be faster, because ClickHouse will utilize all available resources on ClickHouse server, and uh, all cores, and so on, and so on, and will group your data faster, process your data faster, and so on even given the slow, click, uh, slow MySQL uh, data retrieval. A MySQL table engine goes uh, beyond that. It represents a table in ClickHouse. It maps table in ClickHouse to, uh, to, my, to MySQL table, resided in MySQL, in MySQL. And you can not only select from this table, you can also insert. It allows, it uh, supports on duplicate uh, uh, clause in MySQL. And Things like that. Uh, no caching, so the data is still retrieved from MySQL, but it's pretty um, convenient integration. External dictionaries is very uh, powerful ClickHouse technology that allows you to integrate with external data sources and map them to memory structures in ClickHouse, update them when something changes in the source, and so on. Uh, it actually is a silver bullet for many applications because uh, it allows you to avoid joins. Uh, and joins certainly uh, exist in ClickHouse, but if you can use uh, external dictionaries instead of joins, it's uh, often more efficient for query performance. Uh, example of uh, MySQ MySQL binary log replication. Uh, you can set up a system when you have the data which is coming to MySQL which you may have right now for uh, some uh, application. And then I set up a binary log replication using ClickHouse MySQL tool to ClickHouse and have real-time reports available from ClickHouse immediately. So the data will be resided both in MySQL and ClickHouse, uh, but available for query from ClickHouse immediately. It only supports inserts. It doesn't support updates and deletes. It can be added probably in the future, but for uh, for the cases when the data is coming, the, the, when there is insert the only data coming to MySQL, this is pretty cool. It's pretty much the same about the Postgres. For Postgres, ClickHouse has ODBC table function, ODBC engine, ODBC dictionaries, Postgres SQL frame data wrapper, which has been developed by Percona, and there is an article in Percona blog uh, last week introducing this foreign data wrapper. And this foreign data wrapper, it supports predicate pushdown, join pushdown. So in s from inside the Postgres, you can run queries to ClickHouse. And the pod Postgres with this foreign data wrapper will do the best uh, to uh, query the data the most efficiently from ClickHouse. Uh, performance results are very promising. 
there is no article on that yet, but uh, Turkona promises to publish one soon. And last but not least, uh, Postgres to ClickHouse. This is binary tool replication for Postgres, similar to MySQL. And Murat, Murat, sorry, sorry, Murat, Murat will uh, tell you a little bit later on how it works. Uh, now, um, the secret part. Who knows uh, what it can be, what it is? Any guesses? This is actually a manifest uh, in Kubernetes which configures ClickHouse installation object. Um, this is very simple. So this is a simple manifest and you can see that it defines three shards cluster with name sharded. Uh, and this is uh, how uh, in a few weeks or a few months you may start using ClickHouse inside Kubernetes. You will have to write such manifests, very, very basic and very, very, si very, very simple. Then you can apply them using kubectl to your uh, Kubernetes uh, system. It immediately pops up. If this is a new cluster, this is very fast and uh, easy to pop up. Uh, you can connect it with ClickHouse client using Docker image or using ClickHouse client uh, that you have installed at your, at your system. You can certainly create tables. Uh, so here I created tables for the cluster that we just created and, and the query the data. So that was a cluster with three, three nodes. There are no data here, so I just created a dummy table, which always returns zero. But uh, I, I created a table which uh, queries all three shards, all three servers in the cluster. So you can see that there are three different rows returned. So what is ClickHouse operator? Uh, it's, um, it's codified operational knowledge. It allows you to manage ClickHouse clusters in Kubernetes in a way uh, in a safe and efficient way. So in particular, you can define persistent volumes, you, you can specify port deployments, how you want your uh, ClickHouse to be deployed across available Kubernetes resources. You can create replicated tables, you can create users, profiles, manage it using this manifest uh, from a single pr place. You can export monitoring metrics to Prometheus and so on and so on, version upgrades, etc. This is already available uh, from Altinity uh, repository, but it's pretty, uh, it's still in beta stage. That's why we haven't started to advertise yet. Advertise it yet, this is kind of early announcement. If you wish, you can try, you're welcome to try. And any feedback is highly appreciated. So to recap, ClickHouse today is mature analytic analytical database management system. It's proved by many companies, including uh, some, of, uh, some of your companies. It's almost three years in open source. Uh, we will be celebrating three years at the middle of June. It constantly improves, and actually, if you look at GitHub commits at ClickHouse repository, you will see that the graph is going like that. So its commit rate is increasing, the, uh, it's, it's increasing every month. This, is, this has both uh, goods and bads. Goods because ClickHouse evolves quick, quicker. Bads because when there are many, many committers from different companies or different groups, this is somewhat hard to uh, keep the quality on the higher rank. So uh, core team struggling with, uh, they actually encourage people to commit and to make a, PRs to ClickHouse, but uh, having, have to struggle with the quality issues sometimes. Uh, the community is, uh, is growing. Uh, it's, uh, it's not what we would like it to be, uh, but uh, it's uh, pretty stable uh, with constant growth rate. So we are very happy that you are part of this community. The ecosystem is constantly improving, so new tools for ClickHouse is appearing every month or every week. We just uh, stopped counting uh, uh, all of them. And uh, um, there is Altinity, uh, which provides you commercial support. So uh, if you're starting 
or if you're thinking of implementing ClickHouse in your company and you're afraid that you may be abandoned uh, or you, you expect on some problems, we are here to help you. That's it. Any questions? Yes, uh, for questions, uh, we have special gifts, gifts. So every good question will, will have uh, this T-shirt. You should be motivated. Hola. Why uh, ClickHow is faster than other column store databases? Which are the most important key points that are making ClickHow so fast? Uh, it's fast uh, because it has been designed to be fast, but probably the main contributor is uh, vectorized uh, query processing and a lot of uh, highly specialized C++ code. There are a lot of low level optimization. ClickHow's uh, use the most advanced algorithms available, for instance, for search, uh, for uh, uh, for sorting, etc., etc. Et so it doesn't stop. If Alexey, who is the lead developer, uh, sees that ClickHouse can be improved somewhere, he does uh, the improvement. So it's constantly proven in terms of very, very low level uh, optimization. So architecture-wise, it's pretty much uh, the same as Vertica or some other databases, I mean, from high-level architecture. But at low level, there are a lot of low-level optimizations. Uh, I think the main contributor is this, uh, vectorized processing and highly code specialization and also very efficient compression. Um, how are you going to express the topology, like sharding, replication in the ClickHouse separator? Uh, good question, but it's pretty. It's, it's probably not very easy to answer without showing uh, you examples. Uh, subscribe to our blog. Uh, we're going to uh, post introduction uh, this week or next week, and we have an upcoming webinar at April 17. Uh, Robert Hodges, Taltinity CEO, he is in this room, by the way. He will be uh, showing uh, in the webinar how you can use ClickHouse operator, and it will include examples for different topologies, like sharding, replication, and so on. Yeah, you say you, you can delete and update data, but uh, how is uh, that uh, affecting the throughput of ClickHouse? I mean, uh, actually, the MySQL CDC, you have uh, only accept inserts. You said that it's probably going to accept updates and deletes in the uh, near future, but is ClickHouse uh, accepting updates and delete now? Yes, in ClickHouse you can update data right now, but you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, do very frequent update like in MySQL because it's certainly not a OTP database. It, it doesn't encourage you point queries and point modifications. But it was on your roadmap. I mean, actually, uh, now we are just uh, recreating the data when we make change. Mm -hmm. But uh, you are going to, or are you working on some way to improve that and to change that currently? To make uh, a faster update or uh, some kind of uh, option to update that data, not just uh, recreating it? I don't know. Uh, update is not very slow, by the way. Um, uh, Especially if you don't update all the columns, if you update only some columns at the table, uh, then it's pretty fast because ClickHouse has to uh, has to modify only single column, and uh, single column updates are quite fast. Uh, we tested that uh, you can even update uh, probably thousands uh, thousand individual updates per second. ClickHouse tried to merge them into bigger operations, and it's it kind of works. But it's certainly not a good use case for ClickHouse. If you need to update the data too frequent, very frequently, uh, you may use some specialized uh, data structures in ClickHouse, like collapse merge tree or replace merge tree or some combination of those.
how much performance degradation should we expect uh, when using Kubernetes in a dockerized environment? Uh, it depends on the environment uh, and on kind of virtualization uh, which has been used. Um, so we don't have good numbers, so it depends. Uh, when we tested, uh, it, it's actually a trade-off. When you use virtualization, you pay for convenience, right? Uh, when some good virtualization is used like VMware, the overhead is insignificant, if, if notable at all. With Amazon, uh, we, uh, we saw that the, it's kind of hard to compare because we don't know what kind of uh, hardware Amazon is running, right? But uh, we saw that uh, you can use uh, something similar or looking similar w in, uh, in some uh, data center, rendered server, and it will be performing better than Amazon server. But again, it's hard to compare because we don't know exactly what kind of uh, hardware they are running. So there are certainly a lot of uh, optimizations inside ClickHouse uh, to run most efficiently uh, on uh, bare metal. So if a virtualization is good enough uh, to uh, transparently process uh, this, uh, those kind of optimizations, ClickHouse wouldn't notice the difference. <laughs> the, the, um, in, uh, in virtual environments, you often use some network storage, and this uh, makes a difference also. ClickHouse is optimized to use local disks. It works okay on network storage as well, including Amazon EBS, uh, but uh, you can get better performance uh, from uh, local SSDs, for instance. Yeah. But again, it's, it's a matter of trade-offs. So you are you planning to uh, include like uh, benchmarks of like dockerized and non-dockerized uh, setups for ClickHouse? Yes, yes, we will certainly do su su such benchmarking oh. um, because uh, it's 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 often inter this is something that many people are interested in. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, last question, and we'll switch. Two last questions, okay. Thank you. Uh, how much do you have to worry about uh, database administration and stuff? For example, writing indexes or partition tables or running statistics? Uh, there are, you don't need to care about statistics. In ClickHouse, there is no query planner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's no query planner in ClickHouse. And therefore, you don't need to collect any statistics. ClickHouse, uh, has only a single index per table, but in addition to that, there are special structures uh, that help you to uh, query data more efficiently even without indexes. And this is something that Alexey will tell you about. I don't want to put, uh, to, uh, to, take the okay. to take it from him. Okay, last question. Uh, for all benchmarks that we are doing, we take out of the box ClickHouse installation without any tuning at all. So out of the box, it's not like MySQL that uh, in, uh, in configuration that you install from a uh, repository, it has something like eight uh, megabytes of InnoDB with a full, nothing like that. ClickHouse out of the box is configured uh, good enough uh, to perform uh, very, very efficiently. Certainly, if you have very, very uh, loaded system, and you may start optimizing it, tuning some settings, some settings, and so on and so on, but even out of the box, it works already very good. Okay, one more question, <laughs> last one. Main difference between BigQuery and ClickHouse, can you enumerate something? <laughs> different, <laughs> what's different? The main difference is that you can run ClickHouse at your laptop, you can run ClickHouse at any data center, you can run ClickHouse in Kubernetes, you can run ClickHouse at Amazon, at Google Cloud, everywhere. 
And BigQuery, you can only, uh, only run uh, at uh, Google. Also, we've heard that it's pretty hard to uh, manage BigQuery resources. So for instance, we have a customer who is uh, uh, who is migrating from BigQuery to ClickHouse, and this is not just a, a price a price issue, because BigQuery may be expensive, but he has some uh, also uh, performance issues that, uh, I, I don't know the, 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 the details, uh, but again, the main difference is uh, portability, but there are others. Okay, thanks. So thank you very much. Uh, any questions uh, that you have to me, you can uh, ask uh, at coffee break and uh, after the meetup. And now, Alexey Milavidov from Yandex.